I'm David Gross with Condi Systems, back with you to share a little bit of my wisdom for sublimation success. Well, it's a great honor today to introduce the newest member of our Ditrans family of sublimation printers. Right here we have the printer, it's called the SG3110DN, and it's from Rico, and it replaces an old favorite of ours, it's a about two and a half year old printer, the E3300. The E3300 has just been a terrific printer, and we're absolutely sorry to see it leave. This, this kit is coming in, and it's looking even better, and that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to take you through all about the printer, and then we're going to charge the printer, do a couple of prints, and, um, and let you see what the printer can do. So first, this printer is, again, called the SG3110DN. The D stands for duplex, which we don't need to take advantage of in the world of sublimation because we only print on one side of the paper. And the N stands for network, so like the 3300, this also has a network interface. Um, it's got completely new styling, uh, very attractive, and, and it comes with accessories like the 3300, but a few more. And so this printer is special because it's a small footprint, footprint printer and it's for letter and legal output. And with the, the viral success of iPhone covers, um, iPhone covers are just, a, this is a great product to do the iPhone covers and the Blackberries and the Samsungs as well. Um, the kind of accessories that are available to it is first it has the bypass tray. And the bypass tray is one of our old favorite accessories because it's an easy tray to access. It it's, uh, comes with a little slider here. You can slide it back and forth and we can frame the paper. And so a lot of people buy these and they put the mug paper in this and we have mug papers for the 11 and the 15 ounce mugs. But these papers also make great papers for doing the iPhone covers because it's, it's sized, sized almost perfect for an iPhone cover. So I, I do recommend these. People all the time want to save money and this is a great way to save money and make it quite convenient to do iPhone covers. And so this snaps on the back of the printer, which I'll show you in a little bit. This printer also comes with two extra bottom tray, trays for the printer. These go right on the bottom of the printer. They're easy to put. And so the printer allows you to have two of them. And in sublimation, it, it, it's stretching the imagination a little bit why we would need two. Um, but uh, you can probably come up with some reasons. For instance, you could put... Um, letter size paper in one tray, legal size, and since this printer supports the two different types of papers we support on all the Ricos, our Ditrans SPP and the Textprint R paper, uh, you could probably fill them up. But again, it's a little bit of a stretch, but if you need the convenience of having a bunch of papers um, mounted in the printer and all ready to go, then this printer makes it very easy. My trivia question this morning for our sales folks was, if you have all the accessories, how many sheets of paper can you put in the printer? Well, it turns out the answer is 850 sheets, which is just incredible. So each of these hold 250 sheets. The built-in tray in this printer holds 250, and the bypass tray holds 100. So that's a heck of a lot of printing that you can do. So obviously, Rico made this printer as a great high-volume office printer. In fact, in our order processing area, we use Rico printers there because they're excellent printers, they print fast, and they're very stingy on ink usage, so it makes them very economical. And that's why these printers have been a favorite printer in the sublimation world, because of the gel ink technology. So th this printer, I would call this printer sort of the fourth generation printer, and, and it could be the fifth as well, I'm just not sure. I've tried to trace back the, the history of the gel printers, and, and this is either the fourth or fifth, depending on how you look at it. But at any rate, this is the first printer, I think, to have some radical new styling. And, um, and I think the, the, the Japanese who designed this, they all love Apple. Um, Apple and the Macintosh are a big deal in Japan. And I think when they see all the styling of the iMacs and iPhones and iPads like that, um, they're trying to get in there and compete, too, with excellent styling. Now, the printer... It is a, is a good uh, printer for both the Mac and PC world. Works great in both worlds. And in addition, um, I have switched to Windows 8. I have the, the beta version of Windows 8. And I've been running my printer, um, my 3110, in my office, 
and I can tell you it works great. Um, so far I'm liking Windows 8. Um, I normally don't recommend people get on the bleeding edge of technology, so it might hold off a while before changing. It's not quite out yet, but what I've seen so far, I like it. It's a smoother operating system, seems to have some extra power to it, a uh, few new features, you know, but, but it's about the same. I've had good success with Windows 7 um, as well. So, uh, you know, stay tuned and I'll have some updates for that. So what we're going to do at this point in time is I'm going to take the tape off the printer, I'm going to uh, give you a little tour, then I'm going to load the inks, and that's going to charge. It takes about seven minutes to charge it. Then I'll show you how to do a nozzle check, show you how to print a report, and, and have a little closing remarks. So let's get started. The printer has a lot of tape on it, and, um, and so we're just going to, we're going to take a quick, quick break while I take the tape off, and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're just going to open our Christmas uh, presents here and remove all the tape. And um, then I'll give you a little tour of everything. One thing um, is I'll show you this part. It's self-evident, but we um, will pull the tail off and remove this. It has a little sponge in here like this, and this piece of tape is holding the print head in place um, kind of stuff. So um, again, it's, it's, it's one of these things, it's, it's actually pretty easy to see all the uh, tape to take off. That's the tape for that. Um, this part here um, is is the cute little place where you plug your computer cable into. And so we'll remove that. And then we're going to spin the printer around here. And this is the hole where the bypass tray plugs into. And we're going to remove the tape. This is the duplex unit, which I'll talk about in just a second. And, uh, Orange tape. Let people see that in there. And um, we've got one more piece down here. And one more piece. And we may have it all at this point. I hope so. Okay, let's just take a little tour so I can show you the parts. First, top cover. And you can look inside. And uh, we're looking straight down. And this is essentially where the paper path is. The paper would sit right on top of that black, shiny thing and it would be face up and the print head prints across here. The reason I brought you here is, is if you read my past articles, you'll know what I'm talking about. One of the um, reasons the Ricos print so darn fast is because this black belt is, is electrostatically charged to hold the paper in place while it's being transported. So essentially it works very much like a, a color laser printer um, in, in its mechanisms, and if you think about it, Rico is best known as a copier company where the, they, they've used the zero graphic process. So, so this belt is actually um, uh, statically charged to hold the paper, and that's one of the um, benefits to the Rico technology because it enables the paper to move fast and it, it adds stability to keeping the paper um, in place. Okay, we're going to cover the front of the printer now, and this is the ink door here. It just opens like this. If you ever need to know your serial number, it's, it's on this uh, display right here, on this piece of plastic. This is where our cartridges go. And if you'll note the uh, black slot, which we'll get to in just a little bit, it's a little bit wider. So this printer supports an extra capacity black, which is, which is good for us. Below the cartridges right here is the waste ink tank. The waste ink tank holds the waste ink that the printer pushes out of the print head while it's doing uh, priming and, and purging and cleaning kind of things. It also just puts a little bit in there every time it needs to uh, wipe its nose. And so uh, this is. Um, and so you'll need to know where this is because eventually you'll have to replace it, all right, when it gets full. And so uh, yeah, the front panel, I think, is, is an excellent front panel. And we'll remove this little piece of sticker here, take that off. And uh, very similar to the other ones, but I think a, a, a little bit different. I want to show you the paper tray. Now on top of this is where the paper goes. This is the built-in. This is the slider that allows you to pull it out a little bit so that as the paper comes out it isn't going to fall on the floor. Um, very handy. And underneath here is the paper tray. It just pulls straight out. Okay, this is the paper tray. And absolutely, I think this is um, a great segment to understand because we got lots of moving parts. The first is um, this part, and this, this controls the width. And so we push this down and we can change the width. So if you're feeding some of our, our mug paper, you'll obviously make it narrower or make it wider. 
this is the backstop, and this must be pushed to the back of the paper. Now the paper goes this way, okay? It goes this way, so it's pulled up out of the tray, and it does a C. And so when you put paper in this tray, you'll put it with the print side face down. Print side is face down. Now, this tray is also adjustable to accommodate le uh, legal size paper. The way we adjust it is we're going to pull this green tab out. So we push it out and push this out. And then what we can do is slide this so that the tray is now longer. And then we'll lock these back in place. Now then, the tray is configured for both letter and legal. The only thing we're going to change is we just put our slider. So if we put a piece of paper in here like this, we'll push this up right up against there. Okay. Now, if you don't push this up to it, you're going to have a problem because the paper is going to tend to slide back and you're going to get misfeeds. And so please make sure that that's pushed all the way to the back of the paper. So the paper is going to go out this way. Paper needs to be with the bright white side, which is the print side face down. Okay. Now, in this extended position, We'll put it back in there, and we can just pull this out, and that's how it works. So very neat. Okay, let's continue our tour. We're going to turn the printer to the side, and this little cover that I took off um, is the cute little cover for where the interfaces are. Now, obviously, the Japanese had something quite interesting in mind because um, um, after you plug them up, they want you to put the cover on. So in this, the two interfaces that are supported on this printer are Ethernet and, and USB. The USB is the 1.1 to 2.0 USB, not the 3.0 that is just now coming out as I do this video. And so after you plug the cables in, you can route your cables down this channel here, and it makes it very neat looking. Uh, over here is the power cord, and of course, uh, for our audience, it's 110 volt, 60 hertz. And this is a very, very low power consumption printer. Uh, which is, which of course is a benefit. Now we're to the back of the printer, and this is the duplex unit, and it is required that it be in place. Let me show you how it removes, in case you want to remove it, like that. Okay, and after removed, or even before, you can push this and it opens. So if you ever have a jam, which I don't think you'll have a jam in this area, but this is how you do it. All right, so let's remove the duplex unit so I can just show you back here. Um, Back here is, is where, indeed, if a piece of paper was, you could clear it, but there are no doors or anything for you to open back here, okay? So we just, in order to push it back, we push the little tabs, and there we got it. Um, and now I think we're, we're ready to charge the printer. Okay, as everyone knows that's probably watching this video, the real magic in sublimation is the ink. And this is the, the fuel of sublimation success. This ink that we're going to run this printer today is, is from a company called Sawgrass. And they're a pioneer in the sublimation world. And they're a good partner of Condi's. And, and um, it's called the Sublejet R ink. Now, the CMY cartridges hold 29 milliliters of ink. And as you may have recalled on some of my, my earlier videos, this ink is a more viscous or thicker ink, and Rico calls it a gel ink, interestingly enough. And my calculations, which I've done a lot of testing, indicate that, that one milliliter of this ink is sort of equivalent to three milliliters of the kind of ink that we would run through an Epson printer. So we would say this ink is highly efficient. Um, it's been very successful in the, the Ricos that came before here. And, and I know it will be successful in this one as well. So the CMYK cartridge, CMY cartridges hold 29 milliliters. The black, which I uh, mentioned earlier, is a higher capacity. It's 42 milliliters. Now we're going to charge it. In the charging process, those tubes that I showed you a while ago, um, it uses about 25% of each cartridge to fill those tubes. It's a one-time thing. You're not going to fill the tubes ever again in the life of the printer. So, so the, the yield that you'll get from your first set um, will not be anything like the yield you'll get from a subsequent set. Okay, let's go ahead and put these cartridges in the printer. One thing you'll note on each cartridge is it will have a use-by date. For instance, when we're doing this video, it has a use-by date of 4-3 of 2013. You know, typically I see the, the use-by date to be 
um, anywhere from about eight or nine months, something like that by the time the cartridges get to you. Um, so, so be aware of that use by date. Um, as you approach the use by date, call us. We can advise you on what we recommend at that point. Um, also, you'll note as you look through the box for your printer, you're not going to find um, a set of Rico brand inks. And we remove those here at Condi to keep you from installing them because if you ever were to use those inks, you'd have a big mess on your hands. Um, and so if you ever need those inks for whatever reason, give us a call. We certainly can provide them. But, but we want to keep those inks from, from causing a, a real, real mess with the printer. So let's go ahead and put them in. We're going to open our door. And uh, we're going to put them in in the uh, little order here. Here's the, the cyan and the yellow. And of course, I'm left-handed, so I'm clumsy at all this kind of stuff. So uh, but I'm doing the best job I can. And so all the cartridges, and let's just go ahead and push them in. By the way, if you ever transport the printer, never remove the cartridges because if you do, the ink will actually leak out and make an incredible mess. So the cartridges always need to be in the printer, especially when, um, when you might move the printer, transport the printer, never remove the cartridges, okay? So I'm going to close the door. Next, I'm going to connect power. Now, um, in installing power on this printer, I always recommend that you put, hook the printer hook the printer to a UPS so that in the event that you have a power failure, um, if it's momentary, it won't disturb the printer. So we've got it connected here. And uh, to turn the printer on is as darn simple as this. We just turn the printer on and hold down the key for a brief. The blue light comes on, lets us know we have power. Now on the display, what we're going to see for the first time um, is, is we're going to see a message saying that the, the printer is indeed charging uh, ink and it'll actually give us a, a time of how long it's going to take. So it says loading ink. No, that's a little hard to see. And it says six minutes. So we got six minutes here and then the printer is going to be charged. Again, this is a one-time thing. You're, you're not going to repeat this in the future. Let's talk a little bit more about the ink cartridges because we've learned a lot over these many years about, about Ricos. Okay, the Ricos have a unique ink system that's quite a bit different from, say, Epson printers. In the Rico system, um, you'll get a message, of course, on the front panel that says something like low ink or whatever that was typical of any printer. And, and you're tempted to believe at that point in time that some action is required on your part. And so pretty much the only thing you should do is consider having a spare cartridge available. But, but your, the, the printer will operate properly all the way up until the point where the printer instructs you to replace the cartridge. There's absolutely no reason other than possibly an expired ink cartridge to replace a cartridge early. You should wait and replace the cartridge when it tells you to replace the cartridge. Now with this printer what's happening is the, the, the electronic chip on the cartridge is showing you the ink level. Okay, so that's what's on the display. But as the cartridge actually goes towards being empty, the printer will continue to operate as long as it's getting ink out of the cartridge. At the point where there's no more ink in the bag and the bag is flat, a vacuum sensor in the ink line is tripped and the printer realizes that the bag is empty. Regardless of what the electronic chip is telling it, it knows there's no more ink in the bag. And at that moment, it sends a kill signal to the electronic chip on the cartridge telling the chip, hey, you're empty. So if you try to use that, that cartridge in another printer or put it back into printer, it will give you a used ink cartridge message. The benefit to us sublimators out there is that that means you're really able to exhaust that bag of ink. So if you've ever had other printers where you shake the cartridge and realize it still had ink in it, with this printer, we're able to get every drop of that ink out of that cartridge, and that's a great way to make sure we're getting your money's worth. Now, in another video I'll do later, and you can go ahead and look at it because it's probably on YouTube right now, I'm going to show you, like I've shown you for the other printers, how to ask the printer what the actual ink level is. Now this is still the electronic ink level, but it should be quite accurate. The front panel of the printer, if you're familiar with Ricoh, just has a little bar graph. And the bar graph obviously doesn't give you much information. So if you use my trick, and that is to take the printer in service mode and get the actual ink levels, that provides you with, with great information. Now that kind of information, why would you say it's valuable? Well, 
The biggest value is, is that if you're printing a large job, you can look at your ink levels before you start the job, look at your ink levels after you it, do some math, and you can figure out how much ink you used, and then, then adding the calculation for the cost of the cartridges, you can know what that job actually cost you. And I think that's quite valuable. Now, for those that run the printer over Ethernet, if you, it, once the printer is connected on Ethernet, you can type into your browser, whether you're using Internet Explorer, Safari, or whatever, the IP address for the printer, and it will actually show you the ink levels for the printer in that display as well. So the printer is quite sophisticated, loaded with features, well above what we really need for us sublimators, but these features are a bonus to let us keep up with how much ink we're using to make sure we really are getting our money's worth. And so if you've seen my tips and tricks for sublimation success, my 101, you'll know my first tip is to document. So I recommend when you're getting this printer or any printer, you start documenting what's happening. Document your ink level, say after the ink fill, um, to know are we about at 25 percent. That, so, so that's very valuable. And document um, any, any problems or anything you have questions about. When you call Condi for setup, which we recommend, um, one of the things we're going to do is maybe ask you, do you have any other questions? And if you've written them down, guess what? You have a good chance. Now another thing you won't find in the box is you won't find a CD. We strip the printer of CD and then there's lots of good reasons we do that because all the operating systems are changing and, and we don't want to use a CD that might have an old driver. So whether you're PC or Mac, uh, both those operating systems are changing dramatically over the next couple of months and we really want to make sure that you're using the same driver that we're using um, so that when you match it up with our ICC color profile, you're going to get great results. Now this has been an awesome success formula with, with the past Ricos and Epsons, and we're going to keep doing this. Another thing is I recommend that, that after we've installed the driver, got you set up, one of the first things you do is head back to the Condi website in, in the support area and, and upgrade the, the firmware that's inside the printer. So since this is a brand new printer for me and for you, um, at this point in time there are no firmware updates, but I know there will be updates. Usually updates, of course, are fixing problems and occasionally an update adds a new feature. So keeping up with those updates are important. So after you get the printer charged, we really want you to call us. We'll email you the ICC profile. You'll download the driver. We'll configure everything. Usually we remote into your computer, set up everything. Um, and then you will have you up and running. Okay, we've got our printer charged at this point in time, and so uh, let's, let's move in and we're going to do a, a, a nozzle check, and then I'm going to show you how to do a test print. Okay, I want to uh, just explain the, the display just a little bit. This, this right here level, the reason it's so low, that is the waste ink tank. And um, Rico calls an ink collector unit, and it's, it's practically empty, and that's why. So when it when it gets full, you've got lots of bars there. So you can look at our inks, and they look about like um, uh, oh, sort of three quarters of full. Uh, but the uh, the display is not incredibly useful, and so I'd rather get the ink levels. Um, so uh, let's let's go ahead and do a test page. So to do a test page is actually quite easy. We're going to push the menu key, okay, and then we push the down arrow key, which is also the menu key, until we see. Uh, maintenance. And then at maintenance, we're going to push the enter key three times. One, two, three. Now, nozzle checks are something that are good to do at the beginning of every print day, and you can do them, of course, with, with plain paper. Um, no need to use your sublimation paper. And so there's our nozzle check right there, and of course, it looks uh, absolutely perfect. Notice that there are two print heads sort of on this, and number one and number two. Number one is the blue and black, or cyan and black. Number two is the yellow and magenta. Okay? All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to print the uh, report. But before I do that, um, I'm going to assemble the printer with all the accessories. So I'm going to turn off the power, which you just push and hold for a moment, and the power turns off. Okay, I've turned the printer around to the rear, so this is how we install it. If you'll note on the bypass tray, we've got these little push things, and all we do is connect it to the back and then release them. It's that easy. 
Now what we're going to do is we're also going to put the bottom trays on here. And, um, and so the, this is a little bit clumsy to do on, on camera, so um, please bear with me. And I'm going to lift it up and I'll line it to there. I'm going to install my second tray and then we'll be ready to go. Well, doesn't this look snazzy? And again, you don't need any of the extra accessories to, to use the printer. Um, they're just they're handy and I just wanted to install them, show you what you can expand the printer to if you need to. Um, we, we have what we need and that is our basic tray. What we're going to do now is we're going to print a uh, test page and it'll just tell us that everything is okay and um, show us what, what accessories it has. And if you've um, configured the Ethernet interface, it'll show your IP address and stuff like that. So we push the menu key. Then we're going to push the down arrow key until we get to list test. And then we'll push the enter key twice, once, twice. And we can pull this out to um, let the paper uh, stack on that. Okay. And, and again, this report has lots of uh, information on it regarding firmware, version, and so forth. Um, and uh, you want to keep this for reference, okay? And then to put it back online and get it ready for printing, you just push the escape key and you're back online. So the printer is, is all set to go for the next step, which is, of course, connecting it to your computer. Well, we're ready for the computer portion of the installation. One step that I would, would consider getting you to do is to refer to our other videos on print head alignment. Print head alignment just tunes that printer for the ever sharpest output. Sometimes the printers are tossed a little bit in shipping and, and need just a little bit of tweak. So watch our videos on print head alignment. We have two alignments. One we call print head position, which is going across, and then paper feet adjust going down. And that will just help you tweak your printer. Um, next, what we need you to do is email Condi Support and request our ICC profile. We'll email it to you and then you can call us. We'll walk you through the installation and usually we're going to remote into your machine and install everything for you. Um, so I appreciate you watching my video and I hope uh, this has been informative because this is going to be a very successful printer because of the success of the others. And so I very much welcome your feedback. I can be reached, of course, at our 800 number, and I love to chat with all our clients. And I can also be reached at dgross at condi.com. So thank you again. Look forward to another video. Take care.